Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. Okay, folks, let me start on a little bit of a sad note, and I'm sure you know, on behalf of myself and my team here at Safa, we would like to wish and express our profound condolences to His Excellency, former President J.A. Kufour, for the loss of his wife, Teresa Kufour, our own mother, has passed. Senior Kufour, we wish you our condolences and all the best. And while I think that we also extend our condolences to the family of uh, former minister E.T. Mensah, who has also passed. So to the family, we also express our profound condolences for your loss. Mr. Mensah, you too, rest in peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, folks. And let me actually, I, I, you know, I've started this series where I'm just talking to people who, who can comment intelligently on the current situation <laughs> politics, where it's because uh, politics is SMB. So, you know, you need people who can really dissect and diagnose and then deliver the, the, the diagnosis. Why am I talking plenty? The guests that I have today, man, you know, you know, my crew here, you know, long, long ago, the radio station at GBC, then they give us GBC one, GBC two, and things. But then eventually, they started emerging private radio. We were in Namoya Momo. We knew about another private radio in Ghana. No, no, no. There were the beginnings when private radio started coming up. And the gentleman I'm going to talk to is one of the, should I say, the godfathers of private radio emergence in Ghana. That's what I'm saying. That's the radio station. There was Radio I, and I was by the first one, operational one, was Joy FM. And this guy was a part, and big part of the setup, you know, and he did fantastic, man. And uh, I think it was in joy for a while. And then later on, people approached him to help set up another station, which he went to, and he worked tirelessly. And now, folks, that station that he went to is possibly the leading station in the country now. So he, he helped to set up CDFM and put all the initial fire to CDFM. And eventually he is now, as we talk, the CEO of CTFM and CCTV. Now I have the pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine. You go way back. Put your hands together, show some love for Samuel Atamensa, aka Samen. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much, KSM. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Oh, <laughs> Once it's again. For you to say it's an honor because you, you are my boss when it comes to when you see him, but when it comes to radio, you are my boss. So. Not, not exactly. <laughs> You're the <a> boss. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, man. I mean, Thank you. you're with you're with Joy Multimedia, you know. And then you move to City, you help us City, and City is now rocking like there's no tomorrow. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. So to I, the glory of God, sir. At some point, I'm going to link up with you. I want to do a show that's focused on broadcasting alone, radio and TV. Yes, sir. And there My to, pleasure. Thank you. There to one of <laughs> But in the meantime, in the meantime, too, I see you as somebody who is also astute in understanding the politics. So of us, yeah, 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 you. All we know is the surface politics. What? <laughs> 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 I'm a surface politician. You, you are roots man. You go deep. So that's why I'm, I, you have, we have you here today. So welcome again one more time to the show. And sometimes I'm going to take a commercial break. When we come back, current contemporary politics in Kwan. We'll be right Thank back. You Thank you. Thank you. KSM Show. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. 
It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek, your soul will thank you. You are always welcome home. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Zipper Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up a Zipper Essentials jacket at Rural Unisys Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Takofo Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544-548766. The KSM Show. And we are back. We are back. We are back. And my guest is no other than the man, Sames, man. Sames, let me start here. You know, what is happening now in Ghana? Is it an unprecedented development? Or oh, this is a new thing, you know. We have, for the first time, I think, a former president who has come back twice to compete to become president again, which I think is the first time. And then we have a political party that is now, I don't know, you know, there are so many factions, there's some kind of chaos, or I me, mean, I'm looking at the top. At the top, yeah, I see chaos. I don't know what is underneath, you know. Uh, Alan Shumateng has broken away from the MPP. He's running independent. Kennedy Japon. Kennedy Japon too says um, he's also running. And what we are hearing at the top, on the surface, is that Baumia is a preferred choice. And, you know, the grassroots and the delegate. You see, I'm talking plenty. Me, I'm on the surface. You are deep, man. What is going on in politics in Ghana, man? <laughs> As uh, once upon a time, the veritable Peter Lagete uh, answered a question to the then Robin White of the BBC Focus on Africa. Mm -hmm. He said, Robin, this is an $84,000 question. <laughs> <laughs> so I say to you that this is an $84,000 question. Why 84? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, suffice to say, you know, we 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 have we are seeing different faces of our of of the reemergent reemergence of our of our politics, mm. and um, what you talk about as a, a former president um, offering himself to be reelected is, is it hasn't happened before um, under the constitutional rule, but. Mm. Um, Functionally, it has happened because Rollins was a former head okay. of state who okay. offered himself again okay. um, in okay. two. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we have seen it before in another form. Another um, form. Okay. In competitive politics, um, you are right to say that it's one. Now, that by itself presents a unique uh, situation to us. Um, we are only fortunate that um, we have a gentleman of a former president, if you know what I'm saying. We, we have a gentleman of a former president who uh, um, conducts himself well. And so you don't expect um, any form of chaos coming from him. And, and, and underlying things you don't expect. And so that, that's, but it's, it also gives more questions to the, the structure of our constitution, whether we should allow a former president to contest again or not. No reason I ask that is once you offer yourself as a former president to contest again, what happens is you subject yourself to the exchanges of party politics. Mm. And as you know, it can get very bad. And we as a country will not be proud of seeing our former president or a former president descend into the quote and unquote gutters with full soldiers and people throwing insults here and there. So 
I mean, that's just uh, my, 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 my normal thinking. So, but we, we, we still have a long way to go to see how it pans out, whether it should be changed to say, once you become president, once you are in the seat, you have opportunity to do twice. Once you get out of the seat, that should end it. Uh, because you see the former president is an office itself is an office of national importance yeah. um, but as it stands now a former president will come again can come again if they have not exhausted their two terms so that we see now whether we are seeing something new with what is seemingly the, cha the chaotic situation within the MPP um, there's really nothing new about it completely nothing new at all about mm. it um but if you ask me is it the worst we have seen in our politics it's actually not even the bad one that we have seen we have seen major ones happen in this country and so i think that let, is for let, the like which one i'm interested now in what, what event was near chaotic even before 1992 we saw it in the third republic um a situation which, in my estimation, is far worse than this. In fact, there are certain elements of what we are hearing now that went deeper in 1979 than we are even seeing now. First of all, and bring it yeah. to, to today, you know, I mean, the Fourth Republic. I want to limit it to today, you know. What we are seeing today, that's when I was talking about, you know, one party and on the surface, what seems to be killed. You know, for example, for the MPP, uh, Alan Chamating has broken up. He has his own independent movement, you know, with the butterfly. And then we have Ken, who is also, as somebody said on the show, on this show last week, he says, Ken is the man to beat, you know. What's your assessment of that? That was a scenario I wanted to pull, pick your brains on. What is happening currently? And the MPP, the departure of Alan Chamating, and then emergence of um, uh, Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. In party politics, every vote counts. Every vote counts. So one person leaves is a dent on the structure of the party in terms of the of the numbers that we are dealing with. Every campaign message is structured to attract another person, another vote. So if one person leaves, that's a problem. Um, now, we want to estimate the extent of the problem. I hope that's a question that you're mm -hmm. asking. The extent of the problem. You know, it's a bit complex um, um, because a few things come to play when um, such personalities either join political parties or move away from political parties. And mm -hmm. then again, 79 elections between PFP and PNP. PNP first round got 35%. PFP got 27%. Now check what happened in the second round because none of them could get the 50% plus one. The second round, the um, Action Congress party people led by uh, Frank George Bernasco, Colonel Bernasco, from the central region, um, all the small parties, because of the emergence of ethnic politics, chose to go not the PFP way. They all went the PNP way. Nobody saw that coming because basically at the beginning, everybody thought that, oh, they were all against the choice of Liman. But when it got to the second term, they decided that mm, at the end of the day, this is my mother party. Action Congress party moved that way. SDF moved that way. Um, Mark Diamond at this uh, party, you remember, uh, Fish, Achol and Bata, they all moved to support Liman. And then eventually Liman became president. What I'm saying is that why I'm bringing this up is at times it's very, it's very dodgy to calculate mm. things on the surface. People that come into politics who make impact. I have three or four things that I talk about. First of all, you should come with a geographical constituency to be able to make an impact or political constituency or 
ethnic constituency in order for you to make an impact. So anybody that enters into that arena, I ask these three questions. What political constituency is he bringing on board uniquely? What geographical constituency, what ethnic constituency? And the last but not the least is the demographic constituency, which is a very key term, uh, what do you call, term choice for elections. And when I talk about demographic, the emergence of the youth voices, mm. who is influencing them, who is controlling them, who the youth listen to, you understand? So if the person that is coming can tick all these boxes, then it's a threat. But I think that I will leave that for the national politics. But mm. for the internal politics, it's people, I think, to a large extent, delegates make choices that will give them a sense of security after the elections, mm. a sense of security. So when you give them money, we saw in the first round of their uh, MPP primaries, people were giving money, they call it all sorts of names. And people were outdoing one another in giving mm. money. If you give five, I'll give 10. If you give 10, I'll give 20, that kind of thing. At the end of the day, it's not the person that gave more who won. So the issue of money does not play such a crucial role at this time. I believe that people just will vote based on where they feel more secured post the election. As in, if I vote for this person after the election, am I going to be part of the workings of the party? Am I going to be given a role to play? You know, those are the things. Mm -hmm. So you want to ask, will can a phone make a difference? He, he definitely will make a difference. He definitely will make a difference. Reason is that he is saying things that the ordinary person on the street wants to hear from a politician. It's mm -hmm. not the same as he will do it if given the opportunity, mm -hmm. because we have seen it in the light in the likes of Jerry Rollins. Jerry Rollins came up with all the slogans. Kutua Champon came up with all the slogans and revolutionary discipline, development and deployment. Why, uh, why, why? One nation, one people, one destiny. And then when he came, we noticed that indeed it was one nation, it was one people, but apparently it was not one destiny. So it mm. is the sloganeering that will draw people closer. But when it comes to delegates, delegate choices are more complicated than that. Mm. They may say hallelujah to you, but mm. on the day of the elections, it may be Hosiana. So, um, it, it, yes, he will make a difference. Does that allow any political pundit or political analyst to be able to look into the crystal ball and say, with the way the delegates are behaving now, I had a guest who came in and said this. He said, there's a market of the war. If it's the delegates voting, then he was cocksure that Baumia has won this hands down. Then he said, on the other hand, if it's not the delegates, but if it's the generality of the party that is voting, for the flag bearer, then uh, uh, Canada Japan will have it hands down. You know, is there a place where somebody can, looking at the situation as it is, call the election? Like, who do you I, think I between don't think so. Baumia I, I, I and the... Uh, I think that, simply put, but it's for Baumia to lose the election. It's for Baumia to lose the elections. Hmm. It's for Baumia to lose the elections. Um, I mean, for everything we know, um, Baumia will win the elections. It will be it will be major uh, news um, if Ken upstages Baumia um, in this election. And that's not to say that he won't make any impact. He will make impact because of the 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 thrust of his political campaign. Um, you see, it's such that those who um, like him or those who want to vote for him but are but hitherto are expected to vote for Baumia, they will just keep quiet and not say anything. And then when it's time, go and vote for him. 
You get me? Because mm. November 4th. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. November 4th. The you I'm say that one is it's a sure thing for Baumia. We, we, I think Baumia will win that one. You think Baumia will win that one? I okay. think Baumia will win that one. Look, he's, he's courting popular votes. And popular votes are normally not necessarily the delegate votes, as mm. we saw in the first one. And I think that the outcome of the of the second one will not be markedly different from the first one. Mm. It won't be. I mean, mm. for Baumia, Baumia will still come out with his 60 to 65 percent. Trust me, he will still come out with it. And mm. I, I have I have my own reasons for that. Mm. Clearly, Baumia is sweeping all the northern regions. Mm. Ken is not going to have any access to the northern regions. And when I talk about northern regions, I'm talking about the five regions of the north, including uh, uh, Bono East. Mm. So that makes it six. Baumia okay. is sweeping Ashanti region. Baumia is sweeping uh, Eastern region. Okay. Now, if you sweep Ashanti region and you sweep Eastern region, those are large numbers. Mm. Greater Accra, I cannot tell. I, I cannot tell Greater Accra. But if Baumia is doing six regions up north, Ashanti, Eastern, I am not so sure how Ken is going to catch up. Mm, mm. Let me take my commercial break now. So when we come back, I get more of your insights into the roots. Yes. Never feel safe, so can cry. So stick around, folks. We're taking a short commercial break. We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking, Cactus Creek, your soul will thank you. you are Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Super Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up a Zipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Taco Full Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544 548766. The KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Some is in the house. Well, he's actually not in the house. He's in the UK. Thanks to technology, I'm talking to him face to face like that. But when you have a yeah, you you broke my cover. You broke my cover. I'm sorry. Some <laughs> how it's getting very very interesting. What's your assessment of uh, Kenya Japan? Is he an astute politician? Can he read into politics and understand what is going on? Your view? Astute. Astute is an understatement. Okay. Uh, he's he's a deadly politician. Deadly? <laughs> deadly politician. If you okay. mess with him, he will give you a showdown. Showdown. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And literally, uh, can I ask literally, the question I wanted I mean, to what ask? What I'm is that if you, if you underestimate him, yeah. he'll mess you up. That's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. And so I do not, I, I'm not expecting the Baumia people to underestimate him. Mm. You know, if you look at analytically, you can also look at a situation where at times he overdoes it mm. to the extreme mm -hmm. that if care is not taken, he will undo himself. Okay, mm -hmm. because the salvos that he fires at certain personalities in the party um, at times stretches to certain constituencies within the party, certain interest groups within the party who have controlled and fed people in the party Can you give me a practical example? 
No, I mean, what I'm saying is that if you go and sit down and say MPP for years, Kaku Guabro Chair, and then the next you come to come to MPP delegates that uh, move over to Mamia, what does that mean? Yeah. Why don't you name who has stolen? it? Just name them because you have plant better hopeful. If KSM, are you daring him? KSM, yes, KSM, I know you stole S amount, so and so and so. Come and prove that you didn't do it. You know, that's how mm. you do it. But mm. if you do blanket statement like this, what you do is that you give your opponent substance to coagulate together against you because no delegate wants to be uh, pointed at as a possible candidate of transferring money to a Because mm -hmm. you never mentioned it. So now every key MPP member is a suspect. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying that at times he stands the risk of overshooting his bounds and undoing some of the gains that he has made. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, he takes a populist approach. Um, but mind you, the vice president knows how to do that. He actually knows how to do that in a more structured manner, I must say. But I think what the vice president has done so far is to just disregard and just send this message across. As you have self, yourself have put it, he's not just an astute, he's a deadly politician. Being the kind of politician, politician he is, he would understand where he stands. And if in fact that the uh, delegates are so entrenched, like you said, the Baumia will sweep the East, he will sweep Ashanti, sweep the North, he would know, or he should know, if he's that deeply, you know, deadly, he should know. So why would he, well, he ignore knows. that and go? No, he's not. He has not down. ignored. No, he has not ignored. That's why he went to Ashanti region again. Mm. He has not ignored. He was in he was in Kumasi for the showdown, uh, or a rally or whatever. He was there again. He is not ignoring. And trust me, this is not the last time he'll go to Kumasi. He'll do Kumasi, definitely do Kumasi again before the elections on November 4th. Because truth is, he cannot ignore Kumasi. Mind yeah. you, Ken is not an Ashanti. He is not an Ashanti. And he's not one that also grew up in Kumasi. Mm. You understand? And mm. if, if you look across his lieutenants, I, I actually don't know which of them grew up in Kumasi. So I don't know how he's going to hatch it away from the Baumia camp that is heavily Kumasi-centric. Heavily mm. Kumasi-centric. You know, I think for me, the battleground is Ashanti region. The battle, mm -hmm. real battleground is Ashanti region. Whoever dominates Ashanti region wins it one touch. And you, you believe firmly that Baumia is winning the Ashanti region? Light years, light years apart. Light years apart? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Back again to the question, you know, can you know all this? Unless he does it, I'll be very surprised. He would know all this. So then why is he seeking to gain with his constant visits to uh, that region, knowing that it won't yield the, res the, the, the results he's looking for? Well, the I, results I, I'm I, talking I, about is the there, November 4th. There's, there's space for knowledge and there's space for hope. He probably knows, <laughs> but he also hopes that with regular and more frequent visits, he will be able to, if you like, um, convert some of the people, and you can hear it in his in the way he talks. Mm. Because he knows that he's fighting an opponent that has an upper hand. Mm. He's the choice of the establishment. He is a sitting vice president. He is somebody who was who was the darling or the toast of the 2012 election campaign, the 2016 election campaign. Baumia's influence and contribution to 2012 and 2016 election campaign cannot be hidden anywhere in the history of Ghana. The gains that the MPP made in the northern part of the country, unprecedented and all can be attributed to Baumia. So mm. in the process, he's also endeared himself the accolade. And so the emergence of Kennedy Japan does not automatically erase the standing that Baumia has, in mm. my estimation. But I must say, you see, what I'm saying is that Kennedy is, is doing all the right things 
as, as an underdog. He's doing all the right things. He's not sleeping. He's moving from region to region. He's campaigning. You understand? Mm. And you saw that in the first round. And you are seeing a, the same thing. He's doing the direct consumer contact campaigning. He's doing the media campaigning. He's doing the body language campaigning. He's trying to associate himself with the poor mm -hmm. people, all that. So he's doing all the right things. But is it too little too late or so much too late? So this is, what, this is, this is how I read it. He's okay. doing all the right things. But I, I am not so sure um, he has enough time to turn the tables as in, to win the November 4th. Quickly, let's say November 4th. It comes out the elections as you have predicted, or you have, yeah, in your forecast, Baumia has swept the thing fully. What happens then? What, what do you see happen? Will Ken now come and tone down and said, I know I said showdown, 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 but hey, the elections have happened, he is winning. I'll throw all my support for the party. Do you see something like that happening? Or he's going to go, no, this thing was rigged, it was not correct, and I'm also going to go independent. What, 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 what do you foresee? Well, there are, there are, there are several uh, scenarios that, are, that, that possibly can emerge out of this. Um, the most unlikely scenario is Ken uh, eating the humble pie and say, well, it happened, I lost, and so let's let things rest. I, I don't see him doing that. That's, a, you see, that's the most unlikely? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, um, the most likely is um, calling for the head of the electioneering process or the voting process. I've seen things didn't go well. Um, there were irregularities. Um, that's because he has started dropping hints along those lines. Mm. And then the third one is the likelihood of him deciding that, okay, I leave the party for you. I go independent. You know, you hear people say that, oh, that's what Ken, he won't do independent candidates. Well, I, I don't know about who will not do independent candidates because you look at the fortunes that he will be left with if he should go the long haul and lose. If he loses, what becomes of him in the MPP? He's going to become a laughing stock in the MPP. He's going to be a persona non grata in the MPP because of the nature of the salvos that he's throwing around. Mm -hmm. I don't think that any normal person would do this and then still go back and sit at the dining table with the same mm. MPP. Mm. That must be very difficult. Mm. And so MPP itself must not rule out the possibility of a Canadian Japan going independent. Not at all. If if that should happen, so we have, let's say, Kennedy going independent, Alan is also independent, what happens to the MPP? They will lose the election. Mm. If Kennedy goes independent, the MPP will lose the election. Do you think he? I mean, he, he won't yeah. win. He won't win by. I mean, not by no stretch of my imagination. He will not win, but he will be. He will be. He will be formidable enough to cause an upset for the MPP. Mm. Mm. What about uh, Alan? What do you think Alan's chances are? Is he I, I don't think he, enough I don't, I, at least I, I don't think five percent to be a kingmaker, or you think he's just uh I, I don't think he stands a chance. He doesn't control anything, he doesn't control a geographical constituency, he doesn't control a control a political constituency, he doesn't control an ethnic constituency, he doesn't control a demographic constituency. He's just a good man. He, he's just a good man. He's just who he is. <laughs> I like He's just a good man. <laughs> okay. Yes. And, now, this good man. Ghanaians, go, Ghanaians are not looking for good men to vote for. You <laughs> who are they looking for? They are looking for somebody who will take the bullet on their behalf. Uh, okay. So let, let, let's look at Alan for a bit. He said it, and when, you, when he was launching his party, you could tell he's trying to really attract the youth you know, that they are the majority of the voters. He's, and he has a whole year ahead to do things. 
What if he's able to convince a good number of the youth to follow this movement with the Africa shall rise again? Do you, do you see that he could really have a an, an enough impact on the youth that will dent the election? Not in the life of the 2024 elections, maybe okay. in 2028. Because wow. you see, the youth, the youth is not a group that is excited just by speeches. Mm. You know, they, they actually don't listen to speeches. By now, you should know that. <laughs> they don't listen. Yeah, right. They, they are excited and motivated by action. Action that they can relate to. And so, Alan Chematin has been the longest serving trade minister in our fourth republic, true? So, he should be able to list all the things that he was able to revolutionize for the for what will attract the youth to say that we will give our vote to this person it's not it's not it's not what you say it is what you say if you've never been given the chance before mm. but if you have been given the chance as a senior minister a very influential person in the mpp and we did not see the kind of things you are saying in effect, then what mm. you are saying, they just, they just, yeah, 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 but let's move, look for the person who will get it done. Because I don't think that he will attract any youth. I, I, I haven't. I, and I even ask myself whether he has the resources to go the long haul. Mm. And by resources, I'm talking about human resources. I'm talking about financial resources. I mean, to say that I want to be a, a, an independent candidate by itself is not going to command somebody to bring you two million dollars that okay now you want to do because they mm. know that you will not win unless you have some money start somewhere which i do not think alan by the nature of the politics he has played is one of the people who will start money somewhere i don't think so mm. uh, i don't know that for a fact but i don't think so and so that's why i'm saying that the shipwreck is going to come from the financial the resource constraint human resources. Look, you are supposed to raise 36,000 polling station attendants. How is he going to do that? Whose money is he going to use? You know, so without a political party base, and you know that his immediate community of enthusiasts are all MPP people anyway. So there are people who like you. They love you. They even like they associate or relate with all the concerns you have raised. Mm -hmm. But they stop short at crossing carpet because technically they cannot be MPP and also belong to Alan's uh, movement. Mm -hmm. I remember in one of the interviews, I think with Bernard Blair, he was asked what he would do, how he would form his, his government if he should win. And then he simply said, oh, I'll go to parliament and take some from MPP, take some from NDC. And I'm asking them, but that's, that sounds like a joke. It's not going to happen because they are there on behalf of other political parties. So mm -hmm. it's for the other political parties to come to that arrangement with you before you can go into parliament. It's not as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 take, I take the Canada Japan um, emergence more seriously than the Alan yeah. thing, with, yeah. with all due respect. What, what if it shocks everybody? I don't know. All of a sudden, he is the elected one. What would you say? Well, I'm talking about Kennedy now. Kennedy now just comes out of and blindsides all of us, and he's the candidate. Well, I think I'm on November 4th now. Well, well you see, the, everything is possible. Everything is possible. Mm -hmm. But within the limits of what we know, we try and stretch out the probabilities. Mm. And I'm saying that the probability that he will win is not more than the probability that Dr. Baumia will win um, in my books. Mm. You know, but possibilities, yeah, there are possibilities. Anything can happen. Things could change between now and November 4th. It's out. It was, uh, four weeks away, things can yeah. change. You know, yeah. but with what I know, what I see, um, it will be a far demand to say that Ken will win over Dr. Baumia. I, I doubt that. Mm -hmm. Do you go with the school 
that believes that Baumia will win because he's been, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's been orchestrated. He has the votes. The people have been sorted out. That's what's out there. How far but, is it? But, but even Baumia will not believe what you're saying. Even he himself won't believe it. How will I believe <laughs> that? <laughs> he won't believe that. That he will no, win he for sure. He won't believe that. He won't believe that. I mean, who will sort who out for who? I mean, look, in every political um, um, playground of this nature, there definitely will be the establishment candidates. Definitely. Every country in the in the Kufour time, we all know that Alan was the establishment candidate. Um, but did Nanado beat Alan or not? He did. So the fact that the, the fact that you are the establishment candidate alone is not enough to get you there. And Baobia will know that. And that's why he's also not sleeping. The man is always in the bush somewhere. If you like, call Baumia now. If Baumia happens to be in Accra, then it may be for another reason other than politics. The man doesn't even stay in Accra. And in our modern politics, you can you will be deceived to think that you are winning if you are listening to the noises from Accra only. Mm, 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 There's mm. so much happening outside of Accra, so much. And by that, I'm not saying Kennedy is sitting in Accra. He is not. He's also moving. So it's a battle between the two, but I think that Baumia will still win. Mm, mm. My, my, my question is this. Yeah, it's a battle between the two. And you are, you think that Baumia will win? Why? Is it because, as people are suggesting, he is the preferred candidate? That is claimed that he is the favorite for Nana Abu. So I mean, is that an establishment not, I mean, choice or a presidential it, it, choice? It will, be un, it will be unfortunate if he were not the uh, the preferred candidate for Nana Abu. It will be very unfortunate. Mm. All I'm saying is that being the preferred candidate of Nana Abu, by itself doesn't win your election an election mm, because mm. he was a preferred candidate mm, of mm. president we all know that yeah but he never won so what will win you an election is a campaign of engaging people from region to region from home to home from constituency to constituency mm. and we see who is doing that better and regaining or gaining the trust of delegates for mm. me that's what will win the, 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 them the election okay. and, and and so yes he he we we, we i i think that he is the preferred candidate for the president not that the president has told me but everything if he were not then it would be a bigger problem than than, than mm. we even first thought because mm. the president chose him twice not once he chose him twice mm. remember that under president mills President Mills never chose anybody twice. He chose Ahmed Mumudi, uh, Muhammad Mumuni once. The next time he threw him off, he brought John Mahama. So I'm saying that President Kufadu chose Baumia twice. That is a validation and endorsement of the highest order. So I do not expect that Baumia will sacrifice his professional life at that high level and come and be your running mate. And then when it comes to him being the, the presidential candidate, you will say that, well, I don't have a choice. Quickly, very last question. Um, I understand everything you're saying. So in that in that framework, would we say uh, maybe Jack Ed? Because even though Jack had a vice president called Ali Umahama, the general notion out there was that Chairman I think was his preferred candidate. It didn't automatically go to his vice. But there was somebody else that was alleged to be his preferred candidate. Did you hear that? And and if you did, did Jack make a mistake with that? Oh, there's a lot of history and uh, there are a lot of issues to that, you know. So um, some we cannot talk about now. But you see, um, you can even put that aside and ask that as pres uh, President Kufo sits now, who is his preferred candidate? Candidates today, mm. today, today. I mean, they will say that oh, the president before that will have a preferred candidate, but wouldn't it have been easier if Alan were his preferred candidate? Would have heard a lot from coming from him by now. So they all have preferred candidates for various reasons. Now, I'm 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 only saying that 
Baumia will be his preferred candidate, not just because he's vice president, not just because he's vice president, for various reasons. Mm. And we all okay. know that he is. You, you no. get me? Okay. And then I say also that the fact that you are the preferred candidate, mm. that's Doesn't not necessarily... necessarily... Yeah. I got you, Make man. So is. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. And I, unfortunately, our time has come and I have to sadly edit here, but I'm, I'm coming back again, man. But next time I come, it won't be just politics. So I want to pick your brains on radio and television in Ghana. And you know a lot, and I think that's going to be another exciting thank show. You. But really, thank you so much for, for joining us today and for giving us all these insights. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, some of us, thank you. We that. Yes, we deal, with, yeah, we, deal, we, deal, we, deal, we deal with the surface politics, so occasionally we're not going to get those of you who are... No, 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 we are all level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are all level. We are, all level. We are still learning, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you, man. Folks, I was talking to Samens, man, or Samuel Atamensa. He is currently the CEO of uh, CTFM and CTTV, and they're doing great things, and this man understands the value of content and I'll get him and engage him when we talk about broadcasting in Ghana. But in the meantime, I'd like to say a big, 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 big thank you to Samex for joining us and to you, the rest of the people. Next week, we'll be back again. But for now, Samex, I'm going to sign off as I always do. We are out of the whole world say, hey. <laughs>